so now we are ready for the before start flow. So this is done before each and every flight in the CRJ. And also it's going to be after you've done an exterior inspection, which is obviously not quite as important in a simulator, um, but obviously essential in the real world. And also after you've received your air traffic control clearance, you've programmed the FMS and you've performed a departure briefing, which will be be detailed in some other videos that come out in this series. Uh, but after you've done those things, um, you can run through the flow. So there are a few things that you'll see in the document, which is attached in the description of this video, uh, some important things that you do. So the first thing is uh, make sure that the pressurization is set. So that's done. I'm going to move us over in the cockpit just a bit. That's up here in the cabin pressure panel. It's this knob right here, and it changes the landing elevation. So that's actually displayed right here on ED2 at landing elevation. So right now it's showing zero and uh, it takes a while to move the cabin, the landing elevation up. So you see I, I've moved it quite a few turns there and it's only at 360. So if you're flying out here in the west like we are today from Denver to Aspen, it's going to take quite a while to get it up there to the landing elevation of Aspen. But you keep rolling that until you get it set where it needs to be. And next up, check the anti-ice. So you want to get the windshield heat onto low probes right here on. So we'll make sure that those are on. Then we move down to the hydraulic page. Basically, you just want all the switches to be in the down position. So one B auto. 3A on, 3B auto, and 2B in auto. So that's all set and good. Passenger signs should be in the on position, so we'll go ahead and turn turn those on, which is good. Emergency lights should be armed. Altimeter, make sure that they are set within 75 feet of the field elevation. So. Uh, we'd get listen to the ATIS and make sure that the altimeters were set both on the left, the right, and in the center. And there's a neat thing in the Aerosoft CRJ to make it to where you don't have to change all three of these altimeters. You can come in here and click this button and see if you have synchronized, they will all change together. So say I roll this from 2992 up to 2996, and you can see they're all on 2996 now. Uh, but independent the way it is in real life, but you also have another crew member. So either way, it's uh, it's up to you how you'd like to do that. But make sure all the altimeters are uh, in agreement and within 75 feet of the actual field elevation. IRS, make sure that it's in nav mode and everything's aligned. The PFDs are showing uh, full displays without any flags. Any skid switches in the arm position right here, the upper pedestal. Thrust reversers our armed parking brake is on the radios and nav aids are set for departure yaw damper we need to hold down these switches here make sure that they turn on and you'll see the yellow the amber yaw damper flag here on the PFD went away then oxygen check I want to make sure that that's done. Um, there's a pretty drawn out procedure that you use in real life, but just for the simulator purposes, just hit that press the test switch, make sure it's working, and complete the departure briefing. So at this point, you'd be ready to continue with the before start check here on the Aerosoft checklist or the before start check, which I have attached in another checklist you're free to use in the description of this video. All right, when we come back, We'll be looking at the engine start check and getting things rolling. So see you all again in just a little bit.